Okay, continuing on to uh, chapter one of the textbook. Uh, here we're basically just going to learn a bunch of C, right? This is basically an introduction to C, and we'll actually sort of uh, implement these uh, ideas when we get to the homeworks. But for now, this is an introduction to C, and uh, it, you know, uh, uh, assumes some background in programming, especially in, well, I mean, it doesn't assume a background in Python, but if you have a background in Python, you know it gives a lot of these examples in Python. But if you have a background in any other programming language, it should be fine. Um, so here you see an example Python program. And, you know, this maybe isn't the, the least number of lines that you could use to, to accomplish this. But here's the idea. We're going to import a math library just, you know, almost for no reason other than to see how imports look in Python. They look like that. So that basically just says from the math library, import everything. Uh, the comments, by the way, are marked by a hash symbol if, uh, right, everything after the hash on that line is a comment. Uh, Multi-line comments can be written uh, with these triple quote marks, so anything in between triple quote marks is a comment in Python. And that can go on for several lines, whereas hashes are only for the line with the hash. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, now what you can do, you don't always do this in Python, but what you can do in Python is to define a main function, right? The define a function named main. So this is how you define a function. This function has no arguments. Uh, whenever defining a function, you have colon and then a uh, line break and tab, right? Tab being usually four spaces, uh, it, you know, uh, we don't need to worry about distinction between spaces and tab and so on. But in any case, usually it's four spaces. So, um, but so we define this main function and what does this main function do? It prints a string, then it prints uh, the text square root four is percent F. Now this is a formatted string. So what really is going on here is that that percent F because we follow the string, right? We close the string quotes here with uh, uh, right there and then follow it with this percent symbol, meaning that uh, the next argument, right? The next value, uh, this square root four right here is gonna get passed in as a float object, right? Percent F is code for a float object. So that square root four as a float is gonna get uh, substituted in for percent %f. Uh, so this is right, uh, basically just a way to take a computer object, right, uh, an object in your program, and to turn it into a string and then insert it into a place in the string. That's why we use formatted strings like that. So anyway, so that's what the main function is defined as. And then uh, at the end, we, uh, we call the main function. Um, and this is a fairly standard way to organize a Python program. There are other ways, but that works. Okay. Now let's contrast that with how things tend to be done in C. So, okay, comments, multi-line comments look like slash star and star slash, uh, single line comments, um, I guess uh, we, oh, right here, here's a single line comment. So uh, double slash is a single line comment. Um, if we wanna import libraries, then we do it this way. So it's got this different syntax, hash include, angle bracket, the name of the library dot h, h means a header file, we'll talk about those later, but uh, for now, this is just how you import a library. And, um, and so that's importing a library in C. Uh, now in C it is absolutely necessary that you define a main function for this program to run at all. Uh, where, you know, in Python, this is optional, but in C it is necessary. Um, and, uh, and it should return an int. Uh, we'll see, we'll talk about that int uh, in a minute. But by the way, this is this is in C declaring the return type of uh, the function. So, so the name of the function is main. It has zero arguments. 
uh, and its return type is int. Uh, you have to, well, you know, you should always follow that with a curly brace and then a curly brace down here. Um, and, and everything in between the curly braces is uh, what the function executes. So one distinction notice is that uh, in uh, Python, you have to have a tab, right? If everything that is tabbed is inside the function, something down out here that is untabbed, right, is kind of no longer indented, is now outside the function. So in Python, tabs are, or white space is meaningful. It doesn't just organize and, you know, like present the code, but it actually causes the computer to do different things depending on whether there's a tab or not. Well, that's not true in C, right? These tabs are merely aesthetic. We really like to have them, but they are not strictly speaking necessary. Uh, rather, you know, and, and, and I guess let's point out that uh, statements are separated by line breaks. No character occurs at the end of a line necessarily to, to tell the computer or the compiler that, um, uh, that, that one statement has ended and another one begins. Well, in C, statements are semicolon separated, right? So since uh, white space is not meaningful in uh, C, then the white space of a line break would not be the thing that we use to indicate the end of one statement and the beginning of another one. Rather, we use the semicolon. Okay. Uh, printf, that is again, uh, that, that is the C command for printing a formatted line. Notice that in C, you have to give an explicit character inside the string to indicate a line break. That slash n, if you execute this code, is going to cause a line break. Python does that by default when you call the print command, but in C, it is not by default, and so you have to give an explicit command to give a line break. We, again, do a print a formatted string. This time we really make use of the formatted string, right? Again, percent %f is a little code that is going to get substituted for a float. Here, to substitute it for a float, we simply, like there's no special character like there was in Python, we simply write the thing that goes in place of uh, that percent %f. So that's how you print in uh, C. Oh, it's also worth pointing out, in, Pyth in Python you had to import the math library, but you didn't have to import any kind of a library that helps you do input and output. Well, but in C, it's different, right? You have to, if you want to print things especially, uh, then you need to import the library that allows you to print stuff. So this printf uh, is understood by the C compiler only because we imported standard I.O., right? STDIO is standard input output. So, uh, okay, but these two programs print the same thing, right? So here in Python, there in C, they print the same thing. So you see how they're similar, but you also see how they contrast. Uh, here, the text is giving a lot of the sort of uh, uh, contrasts, contrasts that, um, that I was just discussing. So, um, oh, uh, one thing is the main function. In C, you don't need an explicit call to the main function because C assumes that always what is supposed to happen is that it runs the main function. So that's why you have to have a main function. Oh, right, sorry. I forgot, I need to also tell you about return zero. So C expects there to be a, a main function. If there's not, it causes problems. There's like nothing for it to run. Uh, it always just assumes that you're going to run the main function. There can be other functions, but they would be functions that get called on inside of main. Um, <clears throat> uh, but so, so, the, so when you're sort of like, you know, designing a C program, when you're executing the C program, um, you have to have a main function. It has to return an int, and returning the integer zero, as this does here, is a signal that everything went okay, right? So, so if it returned any other int, that would be some kind of a code for some kind of an error. And you could, you know, th this is up to the programmer, but you can use different numbers to indicate different kinds of errors 
but zero is what it's supposed to return when there are no errors. And that's why here it returns zero. So, uh, okay. Uh, indentation, main function. Uh, okay, so that's that. That's all the, you know, sort of very beginning stuff about C programs. And so now we're gonna talk about, uh, you know, a little bit more of the details about exactly what happens when, um, uh, when you compile and run these programs. So there's an important difference between how things work in Python versus how they work in C. Now, if you were going to take the program that we saw up above and run it in Python from the terminal, so you'd pull up a terminal, it has your little start terminal symbol, the dollar sign. What you would type is something like, you know, maybe exactly this, or depending on how you're set up, you might have some slightly different command, but basically Python and then the name of the Python script, right? This would have to be run with the terminal, uh, so, so to speak, pointing to the directory where you have saved this Python file. But uh, with all of that in place, you type Python and then the name of the file, hello.py. Uh, and what it will do is in some sense, it does not directly run your program. Rather, because it's an interpreted language, basically what happens is it actually runs this program, which is the interpreter basically. So it runs the interpreter and the interpreter goes and looks at the code that you wrote and runs it, you know, in some sense from within the interpreter so that in a sense, what you're running is actually running from within another program, the Python interpreter. Uh, that is not the case, uh, right? And I get, okay, so here's a diagram, right? So here's your Python program, let's say, and then that gets passed over to the Python interpreter, which it's, uh, right, that thing is a binary executable thing that's really running directly on your computer. Uh, it is being offered to you by your operating system and that is running on the hardware, okay, fine. But, uh, so there's a picture of how things work with Python. With C, it is different. Right, C is not interpreted, it is compiled. So what that means is that when you write your C program, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, it's a very similar thing, right? You pull up your terminal, it's got this little dollar sign prompt. You type GCC, that is for GNU C compiler. Uh, no need to worry about what any of that means if you're not aware, but you know, that's just how you compile a C file. Uh, here's, again, it has to be pointing to the directory where your script is located, but you, you give it the script. What does it do? Does it run the script like it did with Python? No. Uh, rather what it does is it, uh, takes your program and turns it into a runnable program. Uh, by default, it is, uh, called a.out. So basically by, by running gcc hello.c, this creates a dot out. Uh, so now, and that is, that is basically your program. That is a runnable, executable file now located in the same directory as where hello.c is. But so what that means is that if, you know, when you compile it, what does it do? Does it run the program? No, it does not, it does not run. Uh, rather, all it does is it creates the executable. It creates the a dot out, but that does not run. So then if you want to run it, right, after you have called this command, gcc hello.c, then to run it, you call this command, right? Uh, uh, on, the, on the next prompt, you call dot slash, dot slash basically is a way of saying, uh, the, you know, the dot is kind of indicating in this directory, right? Wherever the current directory is, it's saying here in this directory, slash is kind of saying, uh, I'm going to give you a file name, and then you give it the file name, a.out. And just by entering that, right, you just type that exactly as is, press enter, and it will run the program. Uh, 
this points out that uh, depending on how your uh, c compiler, your GCC is set up, you may actually have to compile it with the LM, -LM flag to link the math library. Uh, so you'll have to play with that, right? You know, try it one way, try it the other way. Um, but that does the compilation and then you run it. And so what it does, right? So here's your C program that you wrote in a text file. The compiler then turns it into this binary executable called a.out. Now a.out runs directly on the computer, right? So this is unlike Python, where with Python, what ran in some sense was actually just the interpreter using your code as an input to the interpreter, but the interpreter is like the thing that is running. That's not how C is, right? Your program, after having been converted to binary, actually runs on the computer. So that's a difference between how C works and how Python works. Okay, so to somewhat summarize, and by the way, I am not using Vim. I'm probably not going to use Vim at any point, but, um, but Vim is a text editor. So like I'm gonna be using VS Code, but you could use Vim, you could use Get It. There's lots of text editors. You can choose however you wanna edit files. But so here, what it's describing is the first step in creating a C program, which is to write the source code, right? So you call like vim hello.c, that's going to create this text file called hello.c. Uh, and then you edit and you go through the process of putting whatever you wanna put in it. Next thing you do is you compile, as we saw up above. In fact, you know, what you could do if you wanted to, and in fact, what you usually do, is you actually compile this way, right? So the other way uh, just always calls your file a.out, no matter what the, you know, your name for the source code was, it just calls the result a.out, right? N n you know, but what if you want to call it something else, right? What if you want the name of your executable to be something other than a.out? Well, compiling this way lets you give it a different name. So GCC, okay, that's just calling the compiler. Flag O, right, dash O, telling you that you're gonna basically write it to an output file. And here, you get to specify the name of the output file. So rather than a.out, here, you type what you would rather call it. And just as before, you give it the input source code file. In our particular example, that is hello.c. Um, and so this is a way to, you know, now, you know, so it's like, right, so if you wanted, what, what is standard is if you call your source code hello.c, then usually you call the output or the, or the bi, you know, binary runnable code, you call it help just hello, right? Um, when there are multiple files, right, we're eventually going to get into programs, I'm sure, that have multiple C files. And then, you know, what's the convention for how you name the output when there are multiple source files? Well, you know, uh, we could talk about that later. But anyway, so this now causes there to be a, um, an executable simply called hello, okay? Uh, and so, right, uh, and so it's not even hello.out, although they are you know, basically the same kind of file. They are both binaries. But, uh, but now, right, so now that this executable file is called hello, then to run it, you now call uh, dot slash hello rather than a.out as before. So there you go, and then it'll run your program. Okay, so that's how you, that's basically the flow of how you, uh, make a C program, right? You create the source file, you compile the source file. Maybe you compile the source file in a way that gives a nicer name to the executable file. And then, right, one way or another, whatever you call the executable file, you call dot slash and then the name of the executable file. And there you have it, it runs your program. There are also uh, other flags that you can use when compiling. So this W all, I believe stands for something like warning all. 
I think that is, uh, you know, that enables uh, compiler warnings. You know, warnings are kind of like errors, but less serious. They don't like crash your program, but maybe like the compiler just notices something that's in your program that it wants to warn you about and maybe, you know, let you decide whether you want to do something about it. So that's a warning. And so this, uh, I think, basically displays uh, warnings. Uh, the the dash G flag, um, <coughs> I'm not sure I, do I know what that is? I don't, I, I off the top of my head, I don't know what that is, but um, yeah, I, I, that probably, right, so uh, builds a binary file with ex, uh, extra debugging information. So probably this just uh, prints to the console when you compile some kind of like debugging information or something like that. So, you know, it's optional, you can have it if you want it. Um, could be useful information, right? And so now we're gonna, I think, start talking about a yeah a make file. So basically, the idea is, you know, like you know, with your compiler uh, command, all of the various flags, possibly a file name, possibly lots of uh, source code files, uh, and maybe some other things, right? Sometimes other things go into this as well. These these can get really long. And if you have to type them into the terminal every time you want to compile uh, a program, that's a lot of typing in the terminal and you wanna shortcut it. So that's the whole point of a make file. A, uh, uh, so make is the command and it runs on a file named make file. We'll, again, we'll see this actually implemented when we get to the assignments. But basically, the make file stores all of these configurations so that the only thing you have to type in the terminal is the command make, right? So all you would actually type is dollar sign make. And it, you know, the, the, the terminal will know to go look in the make file and do what you specified to do in the make file so that every time you need to compile, it's a very simple command to just make. But anyway, I guess we're moving on to another topic now, which is the scope of variables and stuff like that. So let's start, let's just start by talking about the type of a variable. So is this, do they have a, like an example? Yeah, here. So this is just a comment, right? You can see because of the slash star, that means this is just a comment. This does not run. Uh, but, um, yeah, what else do we have here? So um, this, this is a command to declare the variable x as an integer variable. So, uh, <clears throat> so what that means is that x can take as its value, right? You, you can assign it any value that is an integer, right? And, you know, what is an integer? Uh, I am certain that we will get into that later on. But, ba you know, you, but you basically just imagine that integers are numbers like 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, and so on. Uh, this is how you declare a simple, right, single uh, integer variable. If you want to declare many of them all at the same time, right, rather than saying int x, int int x semicolon, int i semicolon, int j semi, right, and so on, right? Like that's long and tedious. So what you can do instead is just do a whole bunch of declarations, all of them as integers in one line. So that's just a little bit of syntactic sugar. Um, so those are a bunch of examples of declaring integer variables. Here's an example of declaring a char. A char is uh, basically a representation of a single character, right? Double quote marks with text inside. That indicates a string that is a, basically like a sequence of characters. But a char is just one single character. And uh, we'll probably look about that. Um, look look into the details of how that works later on. But that right char is more or less, you just imagine a single letter. Okay, another data type in C is a float. A float is like decimal values, so right, whereas integer is like 0, 1, 2, or negative 1, negative 2, and so on. Uh, float is like 3.14 or whatever. Um, uh, and um, yeah, what else do we want to say about that? Uh, I guess that's it, right? Floats are basically just um, 
uh, uh, decimal values. Uh, double means basically double precision. So basically these doubles take up more space on your computer. So if you have a bunch of numbers and you don't need that much precision, but you need a bunch of numbers, then you probably want to float. But if you need extra precision and you're willing to consume extra space on your computer to get the extra precision, so you know, basically storing extra information, then you can use a double. Um, okay, so there's just declare. And notice, by the way, that as we declare all of these variables, none of them have any real information in them yet, right? So all we did was we declared them. But we do, you know, like, what is x? Is x the number 0? Is x the number 1, 2, or whatever? None of the above. There's no guarantee. We didn't assign it yet, so it is. it does not yet have any integer in it. And likewise, for all of the other variables, we have not yet assigned them. But down here, this is where we assign the value 7 to the variable x, right? It was declared as an int. So uh, so it is ready to be assigned an integer value like this. Um, and here it happens, right? So here we actually assign it the value 7. Uh, we can use x to represent the number 7 at this point. And then, you know, say x plus 2 is stored into k. Recall k was also earlier declared as an integer, so that's all fine. k now stores 9. If you want to represent char values, right, character values, use single quotes in C. Uh, this is different from Python, right? In Python, double quotes and single quotes kind of mean the same thing, but not in C. In C, strings, right, they use double quotes, that's sequences of letters, but single char values uh, use a single quote. Um, now, uh, and I probably we'll get more and more into this later, but really, you know, the way that C understands what a char is, is it actually kind of understands it as a numeric value, right? Basically, each letter is assigned to a numeric value and kind of under the hood, C deals with char values like they are numbers. And therefore, uh, since they are stored like numbers, then this char A, as far as C understands it, is some number, and that makes it possible to add one to it. And no surprise, if you take the capital letter A, whatever number value it is that actually gets stored in letter, if you add one to it, it gives you the next letter, uh, which is capital B. And this works somewhat similarly with lowercase letters. Of course, it's uh, an interesting question what happens if you took lowercase z and add one, you take uppercase z and add one, you know, now you're beyond uh, the alphabet. And so what comes next? Uh, well, it turns out that, uh, you know, it's like some code for some other, uh, character value that's not a letter, right? Um, and this is all defined in the ASCII, uh, uh, encoding, right? So ASCII just is the name for how we standardly associate, uh, characters like the character A to numeric values, uh, like whatever numeric value um, A is associated with. So ASCII is the uh, the name of that association. So anyway, okay. We can assign pi some uh, float value, or well, that's a double value because we declared it as a double. Um, and when PCT uh, is here declared as 11 over the float 2.0. What's worth noticing here is that if we had just said when PCT is equal to 11, I'm not sure whether that would work or not. I think you would have to probably say 11.0. So why is this okay? Why can we just write 11 like this? Well, what's happening here is we're dividing that by 2.0. and Dividing by 2.0 is... Uh, dividing by a float. So basically, the computer says, okay, I'm taking an integer 11 
and dividing by a float 2.0. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that into a float, right? I'm basically gonna take 11 over two, which is what 5.5. And we're gonna treat that, right? That is our float. And so indeed, WinPCT is storing that float value. Um, uh, now here, because it's integer divided by integer, what this is saying is that integer divided by integer truncates, right? So if we did 11 divided by two, which we know mathematically is 5.5, but we're going to truncate that so the 0.5 drops, right? Truncation basically just means that whatever is after the decimal, we drop it so you get five. And that is an integer, and that's why it's okay to do this, right? J was declared as an integer variable, and indeed, because of that truncation, here it is being assigned an integer, the integer five. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this is an instance of the mod operator. So K was what, nine, uh, as we saw above? And now we're computing nine mod to right percent is the mod operator. Uh, is that the same as in Python? I think that is the same, right? The mod operator in Python is the same. It's the percent symbol. So this is going to be nine mod two. What is nine mod two? Nine mod two just means uh, what is the remainder? Let me make that thinner. Uh, what is the remainder when 9 is divided by 2? And the answer is 1, so that is 9 mod 2. And so that's the value that's getting stored into x. Notice that it's an integer, right? 9 mod 2 is equal to 1. 1 is an integer. 1 is getting stored into x. x was an integer variable, so everything is working just fine. Um, okay. And that looks like that's the end of uh, chapter 1, section 1. So in the next video, we'll talk about chapter 1, section 2. But let's see, is there anything worth talking about here? No semicolons galore. Yes, every one of these commands has to end with a semicolon. Um, <clears throat> so what's going on? Um, often when you get a forget a semicolon, the compiler indicates a syntax error on the line after the one with the missing semicolon. The reason is that GCC interprets it as part of the statement from the previous line. So that's just a, a note about error messages, right? When you make mistakes, you know, if you forget a semicolon, this is telling you, you know, the error message that you see when it tells you you missed a semicolon, it's probably going to indicate not quite the line that you want to look at, but rather the line above it because the computer is dumb and it, you know, uh, in some sense doesn't know exactly where the semicolon was supposed to be. So anyway, just know that when it tells you that you're missing, maybe it's, you know, if you're lucky, it'll tell you that uh, you're missing a semicolon. Uh, but when it tells you what line number to go look at, you might want to look one line above that.